Another way of getting data into SPSS is actually to open an Excel file. So here is a cleaned up version of the first week's survey. So I've sorted out all of the problems that you might get to do with agrees and disagrees and things so that everybody's response makes sense. Uh, the proportion estimates have been sorted out and I've tidied up what people have said about how many words and so on. Uh, this is not completely tidied up yet. At the bottom here I've got some summary statistics and I need to remove these from uh, importing into SPSS otherwise it will go wrong. So let's delete that. Uh, yeah, that's right, delete entirely. Right, so here I've got some text. I've got gender, I've got how which political party, agree or disagree with the statement, rank of your opinion of stats, estimate the proportion uh, of people that have been to the United States. Have you been to the United States? How many words were in your sentence? Now this one I haven't cleaned up. And this is going to show you uh, in SPSS why there are some problems if you don't end up with some cleaning up. All right, let's resave that file. And let's go down to IBM SPSS statistics and open the version 25. This is quite a complicated data set, not completely trivial, especially because it's got all of these really long questions, really long headings on each one of the columns. And that's going to cause some problems for importing into SPSS because the column names cannot be that long. So what you're going to have to do is have a shorter column name and then a label which says write a sentence describing what statistics means to you or gender. So you have to think of intelligent labels for your data once SPSS has actually opened. Right. So I put it on the desktop to make it easier for me to find uh, when I'm actually importing it. SPSS has opened a blank file here, but it's very small. Right, so what do I want to do? I want to open another file. I don't know the files on the desktop. Let's go into my SPSS directory. Let's go to desktop. And I need to change it so that it's opening Excel files. And now I can see that Excel file. So you just click on it and go OK. Uh, it was opening a very small window for some unknown reason. Right, now here is its suggestion. So it's going to have a column which is called writers. It's going to have another column which is called gender. And this goes how would and do you and so it's got some very silly names for each of those columns. That's fine, let it do that when you import it. So read variable names from the first row. Yes. Uh, percentage of values that determine the data type 95. So that means it will look down the column, check what 95% of the data is. If it's 95% numerical and 5% character, it would assign it numerical. So in this case, there's more than 5%, which is character string values. So it said it's a nominal variable, even though I really want it to be a numerical variable. Move leading spaces from any kind of text. Uh, ignore hidden rows and columns. That's all fine. So you press OK. So it then goes and input, imports the data. Data set is there, just in a very minimized window. Now this doesn't happen, but it sometimes happens. It doesn't happen very often, right? So here's your data, but it's still a teeny, a tiny bit of a mess. So this column is just awful, right? So if we go into variable view, 
we can then start to tidy up this set of data. So the first thing is supposed to be a string. So this one we're just going to call the same comments. The next one is gender and its width is 245 characters because some people have written very long sentences. Uh, and they've put the labels are the things that were on the headings of the column. So it's done a good job of doing this. Uh, this is uh, rating, how would you rate statistics? So I'm going to call that rating. And this is the question about do you agree or disagree with the a statement? So I'm going to call that agreement. Then I'm going to do rank your opinion. So, what was that third one? Third one, how would you rate your oh, okay, political views? Wasn't that the rating of statistics of political views? This is how highly you rate statistics. So, this is an estimate, so it's a numerical thing. You are estimated the population that have been to America. Then we actually ask people, have you been to America? And then we have a number of words. Now, that is a percent, so that is correct, it's a scale. The rating is numeric and it's nominal, but really it should be ordinal because you rate it from one to seven on those kind of like it. Agreement with the thing is nominal because it's just a yes and no. Politics, which political party is nominal. Gender, again it's nominal and measure and, and this first sentence is nominal. Now the number of the words should be not a string but actually uh, a numerical set of data. So I'd have to go through and change all of these values to be the right kind of data before I can then specify that this is not a string, it's a numeric. So I've got to change every single one. This is why you would write either a form where you have a drop down menu, which prevents people from making, uh, giving you an or making mistakes in the type of data they give you, or if you really know how to do computers and forms, you can specify what type of data should be present in the form and uh, have it validate. Now this often happens when you use forms on the internet. But they won't allow you to submit if they have the wrong characters. So things like that happen. 18 to 20 words, what was that? Hmm. So I've got 19. There was no question mark. So this is becomes a missing data. So I have to put nine I'm going to put 999 as the missing value for that one. If I go back into the variable view, now I can change this because they're all numeric. Because they are numeric. So now I can change this to scale because it's a number. That's done. Now, if you look at the estimates or those percentages, there's some down here which are 999,000, uh, they're missing values. So what you need to do is specify those as missing values. So if you go back to variable view for the estimate, you want to define missing values. In this case, there are discrete missing value, which is 99900. And for the missing values for the number of the words, was also a discrete missing value, and I've got 999. Gender, at the minute, is a width 17 and is a string. It would be an awful lot easier to code that, to change this 
well first it doesn't need to be anywhere near that wide so we can shrink the width of that column down to the length of the word female so 10 is more than going to cover it agreement should be yes or no so again no it's agree disagree but again you don't need 15 characters so you can shrink these things down to more reasonable values and the number of words now I can shrink that down to sort of Right, now I can save my data set. So I'm going to save it on the desktop. Now, a good way of doing data, so you know when you did something, is give the date. So 2000, and, but starting with the year. Because this deals with the problems you get through the months. So when you index your files, They'll be indexed by year and this allows you to find your data easier so this is student questionnaire questions week. Uh, one i always put underscores rather than leaving spaces because it causes you less problems if you switch to a different type of computer and save so that will create a sav file an SPSS file containing that set of data.